Hi, this is Dr. Jenny, and this is the second video on in Unit 3. Uh, we're going to be working with problem 11-5. So I've added a lot of things in here um, so that you can get to get a feeling for the criteria that we use. Um, you know, and these are tools. And so sometimes we may use more than one tool to actually do a good evaluation. And that's the case in, in this one. Uh, in this one, we are comparing two different models. We're going to purchase a new conveyor belt. And uh, the Eclipse model is more expensive. And the Saber model, we don't, we, uh, the, the Eclipse model is more expensive, but don't we, we do not have to replace it for 10 years. Whereas if we go with the Sabre model, we know we're going to have to do something five years from now. So essentially what we're doing first is that we are uh, setting it up just like the problem has it, um, putting the negative amounts in here. And I do want to point out that when we do have different lives or different periods to compare, we always have to go a step further with our on analysis. So uh, what I've done down here is that we have our net present value um, with a rate of 12%. And so as you can see, I have uh, calculated that net present value uh, using the net present value formula that we've worked with before. Uh, the one thing I want you to notice, this is different because this is not exactly a cost savings. This is telling you what this unit's going to cost in maintenance. So they're just trying to figure out which one of these uh, is the best. Um, so we don't have any positive. There's not really a cost savings. It's We're comparing uh, what each of these two things are going to cost us. So uh, basically we have a net present value here of Eclipse of a million, almost a million six, and then we have slightly over a million dollars on Sabre. Now normally we would be choosing on these, and, and the the, the one that costs the less, which would, that would be Saber. But whenever we have something that doesn't have different lives, we should use what's called the equivalent annual cost method. And so I've got this up here. We call it EAC. Um, you know, it basically um, it's a decision criteria that we use, and we want to choose the the one that has the lowest annual cost. Um, and that is, uh, you can see this is when we have different lives. This is when we use this tool. So if you go down here, uh, there's a couple things that you need to do. You're going to need the present value factor in order to um, use, calculate the EAC. And there's a couple ways you can do it. I've duplicated a table here. We have to use present value of an annuity because this means you're having amounts coming through, um, you know, each year. So uh, for the 10 years at 12%, we're going to be using the 5.65022. Now this uh, this one I copied off of the internet, but you should have had in your book a uh, folded um, you know, thing that it would have been slightly cardboard that would be inside your textbook. If you have a used one, you may not have that. So then you can look toward the appendix and it should be in the appendix of your book. Um, and then you'll see here that for the five years, 12% we have our value. And just for fun, I showed you how to actually calculate this. You can see that the formula is listed over here. Uh, it's uh, this present value formula that, formula that I have uh, right here. That's what I've actually used in both uh, this cell and this other one. One would have been at 10 years, and of course this would be at five years. And so you can tell that this uh, table actually takes it a few more decimals and I could do that same thing. I could actually uh, increase the decimals and you'll see uh, that it comes closer and closer to that um, to that version that we have down here. So just so you know that you are able to do that. Now then what we do with to calculate EAC, we're just taking that net present value and dividing it by that factor. And then we are supposed to take the lowest value, which it's not a huge difference, but it does tell us in this that the winner uh, in this case is Sabre. And so that should be the 
model that we would choose. So hopefully this has helped you. Um, I just love these problems and I'm sure that th this is probably something you've never done before. But the investment criteria chapter is probably one of the most valuable chapters. If you really get a handle on it, it helps you analyze anything um, and basically use a, a solid mathematics to back your decision. So hopefully this has helped and I'll be seeing you on the next video.